Hey, hello, good evening. How is everyone tonight? All right, so it's eight o'clock central. Um, I might give it just a quick moment as maybe one or two people want to drop in. Um, but hello, how are you guys? Hopefully you can hear me okay. Give me a shout if the music or voice volume is any problem. Okay, I did want to mention tonight, um, the last session I did have my camera available. Unfortunately, tonight, nope, not in the cards. Unfortunately, um, my, my recording laptop that I'll be <laughs> doing stuff on is just not up to the task today. So um, just to let you know, you won't get to see a picture of my beautiful face, but I will be here. Okay. All right, so again, welcome. Um, session number two tonight. This is going to be all about getting that absolute perfect dot. And how in the world do we do that? I have got quite a few things to cover. Um, we're gonna start by talking about the, what I'm gonna call the bad dots, right? What the dots look like that are imperfect. Um, the kind of weird shapes that we all start out with, um, what that means, how to fix it. Okay, um, I'm also going to be talking about how exactly to choose correct paint. Okay, uh, the kind of things that you want to look for. Uh, we're going to talk about the perfect consistency, right? Perfect, quote unquote, um, because it's going to depend on your own personal preference to a point. Um, and then I will be touching on actually how to correct if your paint is too thin or too thick on either side of it. Okay. Um, and then finally, we should be touching on actually how to load your tools and what the kiss means. Okay. Um, if anyone runs into any questions as we go along, please jump in. All right. So like I said, unfortunately, it's not going to be me tonight. So you're going to see a lot of my hands. Um, so earlier I was playing around a little bit and I'll show you here. So these are some examples of the funky things, right? There are essentially kind of four, what do you want to call them? Bad dots? That, that seems like such a terrible thing to say. <laughs> there are four major things that kind of can go wrong. All right, so I've laid them out here. These are the same. They look a little funky, right? And these ones have dried um, actually a little bit better than what they started, interestingly enough. Okay, so this top row, and goodness forbid, it is always yellow. Right, it is always yellow. That is a little bit see-through. This was all done with the same tool, the same dip technique, but they're all different sizes. As you can tell, for example, this one's a little smaller. This one's a little bit, bit bigger. Uh, you have these edges, right, that you can see through. In some cases, I've even got bubbles, okay? This paint, if you can obviously tell, is just too thin for dotting. This is just not what we want. I spaced these out really pretty well too, but had I put them in a normal interval like we would on any design, they're gonna bleed. They're gonna blend together. They're going to touch. And when paint touches, it really wants to come together. Um, it, it's just like a magnet and it's gonna wanna overflow into one another, right? It's gonna wanna find that escape. So definitely if you're seeing something like this, pretty obviously your paint is gonna to be too thin. Now, personally, I don't have, um, I'm not a painter by trade, so to speak. I don't do any general like um, acrylic painting, you know, on canvas or anything. So, so primarily my craft is going to be dot art. Um, so I don't have any of the truly thick acrylics or any oil-based. But I did go ahead and pick up some of the thickest paints that I personally use. And um, for me, that's 
some of the, and I wouldn't really call it metallic, but I have some of these old off brands. The gold, the silver, um, I have some grays that are really, really thicker than everything else. Now, what you're going to see here, and like I said, these ones, because I don't have the super, super thick paint that I've seen some people use, these don't look all that terrible. But if you can see some of these here, you can see where there are ridges and lines. This one kind of went all off shape. Again, here was, you know, sort of where the paints normally would have lifted. As it's dried, this is just maybe about 20 minutes ago, it's flattened out a little. And even that is better than a lot that I've seen. If you are working with those really heavy bodied acrylics. So for example, the ones I'm talking about are going to be the ones that are uh, like in the squeeze tubes. Those ones tend to be the thickest, not, not these bottles. Then these are going to be really accentuated. They're going to be stiff peaks, funny little ridges. Okay. We know that this is because this paint is too thick. This one here specifically, it's just that when I put the tool down, it actually sticks to the paper, right? And it pulls it up and then you get these little funky sides. Again, this is all going to be the same size. Um, I did all of these with like a 12. And again, they're all kind of inconsistent sizes. So you know if you're getting the ridges and you're not getting consistent size as well, this is going to be another thickness issue. Paint is simply too thick. The next one here, again, this is with the same paint, just extra loaded up. Now for me, I can clearly feel the bumps. Okay. I'll kind of tilt this just a little bit to the side and you can see that it's raised. These raised centers or ridges, they also call them nipples, are again caused because your paint is simply too thick. Now, especially when you're talking about this stuff, you're not gonna be able to really correct this after the fact. It's going to be something that you're gonna to have to correct up front. If you're getting something like this, it's a negative or a positive, depending on what you're looking for. Some people do tend to want, and there are the puffy dots, um, where you do want this extra thick center or extra thick dot. And so that's great. This is sort of kind of a in thickness. If you happen to get dots like this that are a little bit too raised or even to an extreme point, because I have seen people, especially with these kind of ridges and these um, with literal points on the dots. Well, truly, OK, we could probably sand that down. We could probably use something like an X-Acto knife to cut the tips off, <laughs> right? And not ideal, um, but I suppose it's possible to fix after the fact. Um, these ones are nice and, and I mean, they're not that bad, really. Uh, you know, if, if you want that, if you like that, you can actually load up your tool quite a bit extra um, or purposely add a little bit of, well, I'll go over this here in a minute, um, but you can purposely thicken the paint with a couple of different things to get these. And that's exactly what a lot of people do to get those really puffy dots. And then this is the kind of third no, no bad dot, right? <laughs> I don't see this far as often, but again, when you're dealing with the extra thick paint and there is also going to be a difference when you use tools that have the ball ends, these three sets are all created with a flat tip tool. These two were created with some very thick paint with the ball tipped tool. The problem with the ball tip tool is not nearly as bad as these because you will never get ridges with the ball tip tool, even with the same paint. But because again, you're going to run into the problem that like in this case, the paper, you just stick to it. You are not going to be able to set the tool down and lift it cleanly. I have some of this over here in my palette. And I'm going to, I'm going to do my best here. Okay. Okay. Oh, 
see, and it kind of pulls the paper. And so if I'm really, really, really slow, I can get an okay dot, right? But for the most part, it likes to stick. Okay, I think I might be able to kind of kiss that and fix it a little. Um, but when you see people, yourselves, others, if you're trying to give advice, that have these kind of dots that don't conform, they're kind of a little funky, you know, they might even have peaks in them. Again, that's paint that is too thick and that is a tool that has a ball tip. Okay. Um, like I said, I do have some of the paints loaded over here. You can clearly see even this one, the yellow. This type of paint I don't run into a lot. And I think 99% of the people that I see don't have this problem, they have this one. They have paints that are too thick. The only time I really run into a paint that is this thin is gonna be like, for lack of a better, like um, if you're working with like a dollar store acrylic paint, okay? If you're really looking at acrylic paints, I mean, if you're gonna go into a different type of paint, then you could also get this. Um, but if you're really trying to be on the frugal side of things, this might be something that you would get. It doesn't look all that bad, um, but one thing you'll notice for the thin paint is when I bring this up, it like doesn't go anywhere. It immediately like flops right back down into the palette. There's no dripping. It's not that thin. I mean, it's not water. Um, but you won't see any movement along the surface here. Okay, just up and down, right? You could almost tell, or at least it seems to me, if you look at the difference between even these two paints, it almost looks watery around the edges. You can already see the opaqueness. You can see um, that how it spreads out on the edges. So just so that you can kind of identify a real thin paint, okay, right away. I'm going to put this one down here. And I'm also going to take a little bit of the gold that I mentioned. And I'm going to add a little bit more to my palette so you can see exactly what I mean. Okay. All right. I don't know if you actually seen that, but the last drop of the paint here, instead of it flowing nicely into the palette, it just kind of went and it sort of plops. That's another thing that a really, really nice consistency won't do. You won't have that kind of weird plop. So with this one, when I bring it up, you'll see that it catches and it stays. Like I said, this one is not that thick. This one's not terrible. We're going to get nipples on this if we try to use it for dots, but it's, it's not super bad. Okay, but when I bring this up again, See how the peak stays? It doesn't go right down like this one does. This one has nothing. The peak just pops right back in. It hangs. Okay. And if we were to take, I don't know that I have enough that I can gather on my tool, but if you were actually to take the paint and kind of scoop it up. I don't know if this will actually work. Oh, if you're able to get enough and kind of drop it back down. Okay, it's not going anywhere, right? It has no droop to it, it's just stuck, right? Even when I grab as much as I can, the point on it <laughs> is sharp, right? Okay. So before you even put a dot on paper, there are a lot of ways that you can tell that it's going to be too thick and it's not going to give you your desired result. And I think that's where you always want to start. Um, you don't necessarily want to get in stuck into a design, especially if you're trying to do a design and you're not just messing about on paper or whatever. Uh, check your consistency first. Okay, so what happens if you're in the store and you want to find paint and you don't really know what is what maybe you do or maybe you don't know what 
the paint brands you're looking for are. So then how exactly are you gonna test the consistency of the paint, right? What I'm gonna do, I have a couple of tips that I had posted as well, and so I'll show those two in a moment. But, and I don't know how this is gonna be necessarily on the camera as far as voice is concerned, but um, a couple of things that, that you can do is like, for example, Let's just say that you walk into a store and to start with, you don't know what brand, or maybe you know that where you live, the, the most popular brands aren't gonna be available. The things that you wanna look for and avoid. So again, kind of going back to avoid the tubes. Those are gonna be heavy bodied. Heavy bodied means thick, right? There's different viscosities of paint. Um, and if you see something that says heavy bodied, that's thick, okay? Um, most paints you're gonna see somewhere on these and let me actually find it on this one just if i can zoom in on it um you're going to see if it doesn't have something at all it's probably thicker like this one when i bought these ones not on the box not on the label anywhere there is anything about its texture or thickness right there's there's nothing it just says it's acrylic <laughs> okay so A, look for brands that are physically marked water-based acrylic or craft paint, craft acrylics. Okay. They could also be marked liquid, fluid, or soft bodied. All right, any of those designations are going to be good. Okay, try to avoid things that don't have anything on them or that are in a tube. In addition to that, make sure that it's shaken really, really well. When you find a good paint, now see this one, we know it's a little thicker. And when I try to shake it, you don't feel movement in the jar, right? If you shake it really hard, or if you kind of go back and forth a little bit, at some point you're gonna feel the weight of the paint shift. It's very obvious, it's like, you know, a glug kind of noise back and forth. And, and again, that'll tell you that it's too thick. If you're in the dollar store and you're going like this with the paint and it's sloshing around, okay, we know it's too thin. <laughs> Pretty simple, right? Um, obviously you're not gonna be able to, you know, take the lid off of a paint at the store. So again, give it a really good shake, listen to it, feel it. If it's a really good paint, um, if it's something that has a pretty darn good consistency, um, let me see if I can grab. I know Americana is pretty popular, right? And for the most part, about 90% of the time, um, probably for me alert, maybe even 95% of the time, I have no problems using this particular paint. Um, and it'll go right out of the bottle and I don't even have to test it. Um, but when you shake it, it moves. You don't have this kind of stubborn kind of glug or this heaviness when it moves. It's fluid. It's not moving back and forth like water. You don't hear it slosh like water, but you do hear the noise and you can feel the weight is even. Okay, so spending a few minutes talking about that and hopefully that's helped. Right? Because I know I've, I've seen it a lot that if you're, especially if you're not in the United States, you're not going to get deco art. You're not going to get, um, you know, apple barrel paints. You might not have craft smart even. So a couple things to look for. All right. So now that we've got that one out of the way, what exactly is the perfect consistency? You're gonna hear a lot, and I agree. What you want out of a good paint can often be compared to yogurt, right? So open up yogurt, you know, stir it up a little bit, and you're gonna get that nice, smooth consistency. If you cook, all right, um, if you do any kind of cooking, or baking, really, you might be familiar with 
the, the term of ribbons, right? Smooth ribbons. If you were to pour the paint, ideally the paint should ribbon. Okay. It should flow fluidly and nicely. You know what? I was going to grab the white because I love that white. You know what's a great consistency, but it's not going to show up very well, is it? Um, so the paint, it's going to flow nicely, okay? Smooth. As it hits the palette, it will immediately sink down. You're not going to see any of these kinds of harsh peaks in it. See how when I actually stir this, you actually see the stir lines still? You see the cut through there? Again, we know that that's too thick. You will not see that. In a good consistency paint, you won't see the stir lines. They'll collapse back on themselves. Okay, when you lift it up, you will see that point bring up, but it'll flow right back in. And like I said, if you were, if you had enough and if you were actually pouring this paint or squeezing it, you'll see that kind of ribbon. You'll see it hit the surface and flatten out immediately. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. We are also not looking for things that have chunks that are stringy. Unfortunately, I have run into that often. I do love Apple Barrel and I have nothing against the brand, <clears throat> but more often than not, I find that lots of their paint are like this. And this is another problem that I've run into and I figured out a solution for. So I'm going to show you. Okay. So already you can see, see the string. It's kind of weird. It has almost a gloopy or almost chalky kind of consistency when it's coming out of the bottle. See? There's a couple of reasons that this could be. I almost have a chunk here in the center, right? A, if you get paint like this, it could very well be that your paint has been subject to cold. I did get a batch of paint uh, before Christmas time, was it last year or the year before? And I am convinced that the packaging, while in transit, just got too cold and it'll do this. The other part of that is if it's, you know, it's just an inferior or old paint. Now, I know that this one isn't old, right? Um, but yeah, this is just a disaster. Now, I can technically take the middle out because it's almost like a jello clump in it and I could separate this. Okay, now this part of the paint is fine. Okay, I could potentially use that. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of gross. So if you ever run into paint that has that problem, you know why. So we wanna be here. You'll always see that the paint will dry flat okay if you want it to be flat this is ideal this is perfect okay look at how long i mean we've already been sitting here for a few minutes and this thick paint still has the streaks in it that i ran so hopefully again that's helpful we do want we do want the beautiful yogurt <laughs> okay so what if you've got one of these what if you've got something that's too thin or massively too thick. The first thing that I'm going to say, um, and let me show you this guys, because topic. I know it is. Um, let's this real quick. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you something here. Can you thin your paint with water? It is hotly debated. Okay, I'll be honest, it is. And just like my little presentation here says, yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. You can thin your paint with water. They're water-based acrylics. 
However, like big fat butt, big fat bold butt, okay? You do not want to break down the binders and the paint. All right, paint is paint for a reason, it's not dye. Paint has binders. And the problem that we run into, and the reason people do not suggest thinning with water, is because water will break down the binders in the paint. And that's extremely, extremely important. It's probably the most important part of the paint and how it's made. Okay, paint, if you break down the binders, you are going to lose the ability to have your paint adhere to your surface, i.e., depending on what the surface is, it's going to crack eventually. Um, it might peel right off. If you're going to do something like a mug, if you're going to do a glass, a plate, something that's actually going to be used, you immediately are going to lose the capability to wash it. You will not be able to wash it. And in some cases, not even wipe it with a wet cloth because the paint has lost its ability to adhere to its surface or it's severely uh, brought that capability down. All right. Um, of course, in addition, water is just water. It's clear. You're going to lose a bit of its vibrancy. Its color is going to pale. It's going to be dull. Um, it will also open it up to fading a lot faster. So you do not want to break down the binders, and that's why people tell you do not use water. Okay. Well, like I said, you can potentially use water, yes, but it's a really thin line. I've done my research and I've looked into professional painting, not just dot art. And even professional, you do not want to thin an acrylic paint beyond a general, huge bold there, um, a general ratio of 30%. If you do a larger quantity of water than that 30% water to paint ratio, that's when your binders are gonna start breaking down to a larger extent where it's gonna be visible. Now, I've had people argue and fight, and it's a huge thing. And um, they'll tell you, well, I've been doing it for years and it's fine. And I, use water to thin my paints all the time and I've never had a problem. I have things that I've been, um, I've painted, I've dotted and that are three years old and I've not had the problem. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. I'm not saying you can't do it and you could very well absolutely be right, but that just means that you haven't exceeded the threshold and the binders are still intact. But it's extremely difficult. Um, one of the things that one of the things that I recommend is that if you are going to thin with water, honestly, for me, and this is just me, and this is beginner talk. Let's just say that you decide to take your paint and you want to thin it with water and you've decided that you're OK with that. In my honest opinion here, I would not necessarily thin by droplets of water in your palette because at least for me I don't I don't pay much attention to how much paint I'm putting in the palette right I'm not able to count drops of paint and I'm not going to weigh it and whatever so I don't know exactly how much this is but I do know exactly how much this is if you're going to thin with water my suggestion though to make sure that you're safe is to do it in larger quantities. Do it in measured quantities. Don't do it in your palette. I know people are gonna tell you with other things, do it in your palette and do it as you need it. But to prevent any issues with that 30% ratio, give or take 30% ratio, just do it in a, in a quantity where it's measured so that you know. Um, because again, otherwise, if, if you do it wrong, you are, you're going to have paint that looks beautiful. It, it's going to look fine. For example, like this one, you're not going to even notice the difference if I add water to this. And you're going to put it down and it's going to look fine. 
and it's not going to cause a problem. Um, because it's really, really, really deceiving. Even if you have exceeded the threshold of the 30%, you could put your drops down on the pink here, um, or you can put your dots down on uh, your paper or your canvas or whatever, and it will look fine. But you take your project, um, let's just say you did a coaster, right? You do a coaster, or you do maybe a little canvas that's gonna sit in your house. The first time you sit down a hot cup or a cold cup on your coaster, oops, <laughs> the moisture um, and the humidity or vice versa heat is what's going to trigger some of these ill effects. For example, if you've got a canvas that you've done and you've hung up on your wall and it's going to look great until that one rainy season when you have a ton of humidity hit. Um, and in your region, it's not all that humid normally. You could see it start cracking. You could see things happen. Um, you know, if if your piece of art is on the wall and it's exposed to the sunlight, it's going to dull a lot faster, right? It's it's going to go almost transparent and no time flat as to where these other paints aren't going to be quite as susceptible uh, to the dulling and the fading. Um, obviously, they will. Uh, that that's kind of a given unless you seal it but um, a lot of these changes in the weather and the humidity um, again in the heat um, just the way that you know especially something like a canvas the way things move and cause the problems so don't just dot and say it's good look look it's good <laughs> because you could be eating your words right you got to be careful um, so kind of back to the topic there, can you thin with water? Yes. Do I recommend it? No. Unless you're a little more experienced, um, excuse me, and, and until you've gotten the hang of things, I still don't suggest it. Um, and, and even then do it in measured quantities. Okay. The other part of that, let's just say it's too thick. Now, what do you do? You are always told, and I know the word medium is all over. Well, what in the world is that? Because there's a million different mediums. A lot of the brands like Floritol and Liquitex are going to be my go-tos and my favorites. Um, this is one of my favorites. I like the Liquitex brand. This one is actually just a fluid medium. I use this one on a lot of different things because these are not just for thinning paint, okay? These do a lot of things, all right? These can actually help you adjust not only the thickness, it will also help with the adhesion. If you use this, unlike water, it's not going to change the look of your paint. It's not going to dull it, all right? Just like this one, this one is a gloss medium. Um, you can find it in all kinds of different species. So you can do like a gloss or a matte, for example. So it doesn't have to be gloss. Um, so that's another reason to use a medium over water. And I get it, especially if you're a beginner. These bottles are not cheap. I think this one was probably um, eight, nine, $8.99 or $9.99. Um, I also tend to use a glass medium if you're into glass. 100% recommend that. But that was probably about $14.99, I think, when I bought that one. And so they are expensive, but quite honestly, do it anyways. Because literally you are going to use one or two drops at a time because this is the type that you do want to use in your palette. Unlike mixing with water, if you're going to do that, it doesn't have to be that measured. In this case, it's not going to break down your binders. It's going to keep the paint intact. It's not going to dull. It's it's not going to change it all that much, um, but it's going to get you the consistency that you want. And even with stuff like this, this pink gloppy mess, <laughs> it works. Um, I have started to use this when I have some of this paint because some of this, you know, it's it's colors that I can't find anymore or 
it's just something that I want to use and I've got this weird consistency going on you know I've got this stringy gloopy mess but adding this medium I mean being that it's more like kind of a milk it breaks that up thins it out without being like water so the other question is okay well like this one it is a liquitex brand but you can look for pretty much any fluid medium you can use fluid medium you can use flow medium which is initially designed like um to make sure to or paint extender i should say uh, because that will make sure that your paint doesn't dry up as quickly and it does the same thing it will also thin down the paint a bit um pouring medium i know a lot of people cross over between dot art and paint pouring and absolutely that works too okay so i'm probably going to need quite a bit more to get this one to the consistency to where it would be usable. Okay, cause see it's still got some of this stuff, but look already, look. For the people that were here a few minutes ago, this was stringy, okay? So now some parts, I put two drops in here and the string is already gone, okay? Still too thick, still not exactly right. But up until I bought this fluid medium, I was not getting the right consistency and I was fed up and about to toss all of this stuff or contact Apple Barrel and have them replace it. Okay, well, I don't necessarily have to do that anymore. Right? And like I said, this is why you use a medium. Look at that. No more clumps. No string. Still maybe a little bit thicker than maybe I might want it in some places, but give it a really good stir. Ta-da! Okay, <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay. I'll drop a couple dots on this one too, just to kind of see where it goes. Okay, and like I said, pouring mediums and stuff, um, it doesn't matter what brand, it really doesn't. The only thing that I am gonna caution though about some of these mediums, oh, look at that. See? <clears throat> and you see it here. Okay, no more gloop. The next part of this, the two things that I'm gonna mention while I'm kind of on track with this, some mediums more than others will cause bubbles. You are going to stir it and you've seen how I did this one just now, right? I'm, I'm not really being careful. I'm just like stirring it. See all the bubbles? Okay, so you do have to kind of be careful. You do, if you really are doing this for your painting and not just demonstration, do it slowly. Keep your tool down at the bottom of the palette or whatever you're doing right. Try not to incorporate air or try not to incorporate um, a ton of it. At least air is possible, the better. Okay, because then we're going to lessen the air problem, the bubble problem. Um, because even if you don't see a whole lot of bubbles here, when this dries, you could see bubbles appear that are going to come up from the surface and pop, um, especially if you are going to oven cure. Oh, and that's a whole nother ball of wax. But if you're going to oven cure something, again, make sure um, that if you use like a glass medium like I do, stir slowly, keep the air out. If you do run into air bubbles, typically speaking, um, you know, just giving a good tap, you know, bring all those bubbles to the surface. Usually that's enough. I mean, if you've gone really aggressive or if you have a particular brand of medium, I've seen some off brands are worse than others. Um, but the other thing that you can do is, um, oh, and I've completely forgotten the brand name. It's different in every country, but um, there are tablets or drops that you can buy for babies that will relieve gas. <laughs> I kid you not, it does work. 
Um, you really have to play around with it though because everything being so different, some of them are just tablets. So you kind of have to play with that. Um, but realistically, if you stir slow enough, if you use a tool that's not going to incorporate, oh, and did I really, I think I dragged my palette through that. No, I wasn't paying attention. Um, like I said, stir slowly, keep as much air out of it as possible and just continue to tap the bubbles out. Okay. On the other side, now we've dealt with paint that's too thick. Okay, we've got rid of the major problem. What if it's too thin? Now, like I said, honestly, I, I don't paint paint outside of dot art, right? I, I paint with my daughter, you know, sure. <laughs> I will grab some some silly craft um, paints and and some watercolors, right? But um, I'm not otherwise any kind of trained artist, so I don't tend to use oil, um, and I don't use other type of the thick, heavy-bodied acrylics. But if you do, okay. If you've got, and let me this up here a second. If you've got things that are thin, okay, so we are working with thick to thin and now we're going to go the opposite direction. You're going to want to use a medium and I don't have any of these mediums because I tend to buy pre-ready paint because it's everywhere and it's cost effective, but you can buy gel medium to make sure that your paint isn't going to be too thin. The gel mediums, um, let me think, they're, I would say close enough to the consistency or or feel or look almost as like a Vaseline, like a, um, like a Vaseline jelly or uh, like a clear gel or almost clear gel. And they typically come in two types, which is gonna be medium or heavy gel. Right, you can get them in squeeze, you can get them in a little jar that you can just bout. Um, like I said, unfortunately, <laughs> nothing to show you. Um, I don't I don't buy the gel mediums because I've just never had to use it. However, um, the one or two times that I did want to play around with things, DIY'd it. Works pretty well, but you kind of have to play around. Um, again, I'm going to call you out if you're a baker. Okay, so if you bake, if you cook, and I've got just a silly old jar here, um, you might already know what this is. Cornstarch slurry. Cornstarch, talcum powder, anything. Um, I've seen a lot of websites. I looked it up just, just for the sake of it because I don't, I, I heard that cornstarch worked and I used it the same way I do in my cooking, which is kind of a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, one part water, one part cornstarch. But I have seen that the ratio recommended is going to be something like two tablespoons or what about 30 milliliters um, to about a half a cup of water, which is 125 milliliters. So about two tablespoons of cornstarch to half a cup of water. Seems like a lot. I can't imagine using a half a cup of thickener um, especially because a slurry like this, especially if you do decide to use cornstarch, this won't keep. And don't try to keep it. Please don't try to keep it. <laughs> um, this will go bad um, in three, four, five days. I think maybe if you put it in the refrigerator, you could get away with maybe six or seven days, but it'll start to grow yeast and it'll get rank. <laughs> so I can't imagine anybody um, especially if you want to do it in your palette, um, you know, and you want to thicken this stuff up. Um, actually, you know what I wonder? Um, keeping a hold of that much or making a half a cup of this stuff, because this is, like I said, I, I usually use like a one-to-one, -one, right? So um, I don't even know what, I kind of just mix it. But um, if it's, if you use it, 
I'm going to tell you something that I don't hear anybody talk about because I don't really see any people actually physically using it. Okay, so the same thing with talcum powder or other kinds of powder. If you want to use flour or cornstarch, I mean, if you bake, think of it like that, right? Think of any other, other kind of slurries that you could make. Potentially that'll work. It's going to separate. Okay, so right now this is probably a little thin. Okay, you can see it slush around in here. It's going to separate. Um, after a little while, the water and the powder is going to separate. What honestly could happen is that you could use this and do something like that two tablespoons for half a cup of water, which I think is a little bit, a little too thin. And you could actually end up thinning thin paint. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So um, if you're not 100% sure about the ratios, then mix it, let it sit, let it separate, okay? And then you can pour off some of the excess water until you get kind of a thick slurry, you know, the, the thicker um, settlement at the bottom that's just, just wet, just barely wet. And then you can start adding this a little tiny bit, little drops at a time um, into your palette and then mix it really, really well. Okay, again, when you're mixing it, you can get the same thing. Anytime you're mixing anything into your paint, you could really easily get the bubbles. Um, so just be careful about that. This, you can just throw, I, I lost the lid. I, I don't know, it, it broke off and I lost it. <laughs> just, just before this. Um, but yeah, just throw it in a little jar, shake it up, you're fine. Watch for the separating, shake it really, really good before you use it, pour off any extra water. Okay, so hopefully. Um, I think that about covers it as far as what to add when it's too thick or too thin. I wish I had an example for you for the gels. I'm sorry. Big ol' whoops from me. Okay, so the very last thing that I wanted to cover here. How many of you have heard the perfect dot is made by kissing the surface? Don't push down, kiss the surface. And when I was a beginner, I thought, oh, well, that sounds pretty simple. That, no big deal. And then I started doing it and I'm like, what the hell does that mean? What does it mean to kiss the surface? What is this kiss they keep talking about? All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about this. Okay, so now let's take some of this magenta, which I know is a good consistency. We're not gonna start out yucky, okay. First thing, two basic types of tools. You're gonna have the bullhead and you're gonna have the flat. Okay. There's a million different brands and it doesn't matter. You're essentially going to have one of two tips. You're going to have a flat or you're going to have a ball. When it comes to your loading of the paint, typically speaking, when you are going to make just a standard dot, just about halfway or maybe a little bit above half of the ball that you're using. Okay. Always redip up to the same line. Okay. I see a lot of videos, which actually surprises me, where people are going to make a line or a design and they do this. They make two dots. Not extremely noticeable, but they're not the same size. <laughs> the consistency is not going to be there. If you really, really, really want to have a nice piece, you want to dip each and every time. You don't want to do this kind of stuff. Uh, because especially when it comes to larger dots, doing that is going to bite you in the butt because the consistency of the dot is going to change every single time. You're not going to have the exact same amount of paint on the second one as you do the first, i.e. walked dots. Okay, so unless you're going to walk the dots, dip every single time. If you want to load it up well over the dot, 
okay? Especially if you want to do walked dots. You want to load it up nice and heavy, okay? Because you want this to go as far as possible, okay? You can also, so like, see, so swirl it in here. You can dip it, especially if you're doing swooshes. A lot of people like this method, kind of scooping it, right? Get as much on there as possible. If you do that, I like to hang out just for an extra second to let gravity take its place and then do the dot. The other part of that is if you want something like a swoosh, okay, do it one, two, three times, whatever you want. That's gonna give you your swooshes. We are going to have an entire video on doing this stuff, so don't pay attention to that, all that greatly at this moment. Just make sure that whatever you're doing with your dips is consistent all the way across. Okay, it's going to screw you up um, and your dot consistency is going to falter if you're not consistent with the way that you load your tools. Now, when it comes to the bigger tools, and I don't know if more have this, and I don't even know if it's visible, on the Happy Dotting Company tools that I use, there is a tiny ridge here. You can see I'm catching it with my nail, even if you may not be able to see it actually on screen. You'll see that my nail catches it. That's gonna be a real good loading point. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the kiss with this, because I find it it's a little easier to describe. So essentially, again, unless you're gonna do something like um, a swoosh or walked dots, with these tools, make sure it either goes up to the line or essentially just press it down far enough to where the paint just goes over the lip or the side of your rod, okay? As you can see, the paint's gonna hang off. It's not dripping. It's not thin enough to drip. It's not pointed like it would be when it's thick. The kiss. What you wanna do is let gravity work, okay? When you put the tool down, and I'll try to lift this up a little bit, maybe this will help. Gravity wants to take over. When you hold this down and touch it to your surface, you are touching that little ball, see the ball hanging off of there? That ball of paint is gonna make contact before your tool does. And that's another reason you wanna slow down. Okay, don't rush it, don't shh, 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 shh. Okay, you're not in a factory. <laughs> Part of the process is calm and meditative, whether you want it to be or not, it is. <laughs> it's meant to be, okay. So lower your tool slowly, measuredly. Okay, that's one of the reasons why I like putting my finger here um, on the surface so that I can lower this down properly. And it doesn't have to be straight up and down. We'll talk about that another time. Okay, but let the paint touch the surface. Then lower your tool down just to the point that you can kind of feel a resistance. Because if you're slow enough and you're gentle enough, you will feel it, okay? Then gravity takes over. Essentially what we're doing is just like a bubble. If you've played with bubbles as a kid, Think about the paint on the tip as a bubble. And when you blow it, um, for example, once you've blown a bubble, you know, I was doing this with my daughter a little while ago. Um, if you blow a bubble of soap onto water, it kind of wants to catch. That same action is sort of what we're doing here. And that, that essentially is that kiss. We're letting this ball touch the surface and it's gonna expand, it wants to latch on, and it wants to release, and then we're pulling back, okay? I, like I said, I don't know, I don't know how people generally describe it and explain it, other than I see a lot of people just use that one word, 
kiss the surface. Don't press down, kiss the surface. So that's what it means, okay? Because alternately, if I load this up to the same, okay, and I put this down too quickly, for one, see the size difference? Same tool, same load, same everything, larger size, because I'm putting more pressure on it. This is actually now larger than a 10. <clears throat> if you look, if I put this on the side, see it's overlapping. This is actually not a 10 anymore. That might be a 10 and a half. Okay. The other thing is if I push down and I actually touch the surface, when I'm touching it, you're gonna see again, the same thing is here. It's gonna push out, it's gonna squeeze over. Because my paint is a good consistency, it's not all that funky, but you can still see, like here, you can still see the ridge. It's not a nice center dome. I've got a ridge in here. And especially when you're working on something like cardstock, cardboard, paper, cardboard, or um, construction paper, you're gonna get these weird little things, right? So we just wanna to learn to kiss the surface and you wanna have enough paint, especially when you are using these flat tools. So if I do this, no matter how gentle and careful I am, if I don't have enough paint on here, the consistency, this right here is usually what I see, that area. So if you're up here and you're like, dang, I have these really weird lines. If your paint is a good consistency and you've checked off all the boxes from earlier and you're still getting this, it's because you're touching the surface with a flat headed tool. <laughs> you will not get it. And I don't care how hard you push. You won't get those with a round tool. Okay. So I can tell <laughs> if somebody shows me a picture and says, hey, why in the heck is my tool doing this? I'm going to say, well, you have a flat headed tool <laughs> and this is why you're doing it. You can clearly see too, um, when you either don't have your, you have enough paint on the tool. Again, the consistency is correct. If you don't have enough paint on the tool and you're pushing too hard, you're gonna see gaps. You're gonna see through it. Where here, you still see kind of gaps through it, but it's more consistent for better terminology. I, I don't even know what the word might be there. Um, I think you can see the difference, right? These are gonna be sharp, kind of weird, funky peaks, more or less still covering, and this one has the gaps. Okay, so kind of a good way to troubleshoot. Okay. Um, if you ever catch yourself with either of these tools and it sticks and you're like having to pull it back up or the paper, like in this case, actually follows you when you pull it up again, too thick. Okay. So more or less, I think I have covered all of the major points that I wanted to show you guys. Um, again, we've kind of covered what the bad dots look like. Okay. How to determine if your paint is too thick or too thin. How to choose the actual correct paint, even if you're in the store or if you've already got it open. Test it before you start dotting. We've gone over the perfect consistency you know, what we're ideally kind of looking for, for the basic flat dot. We're not talking about some of the extravagant puffy dots and things like that. Um, I've covered for you what to do when it's too thin and when it's too thick, or if you get, like I said, like with this one, I've showed you, you know, kind of the globby messes that can be corrected. We've gone over some DIY stuff, water as well. And then finally the kiss. Okay. Um, at this point, I think, if any of you have any questions or anything else that you want me to touch on or quickly go over again, let me know. Be happy to answer any of your questions now or um, if you're going to be catching this after, drop it in a comment and let me know. 
Um, but I hope you guys have picked something up from this. I certainly hope it's valuable. I hope you learned something. <laughs> I hope it was worth your hour. Um, I do typically do pretty much all of my episodes, whether they are our um, kind of 101 sessions like we're doing right now, um, any of my actual dot art or other um, kind of videos, I always kind of try to keep them around the one hour to one and a half hour mark. Um, so again, I, I certainly hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions, if you run into anything else that you wanted to even just talk about or discuss, let me know. If you guys have made it this far, I am doing one more scheduled video that I've got up right now um, in two weeks. That is going to be not this coming next Saturday, uh, but the following. Okay, we're gonna do another one. Actually, in the session, uh, I am gonna be talking a little bit more about um, some of the things like consistency. We'll kind of touch again on some of the tools, um, things like that, um, but really, I want to actually get started and I would love to see some people join um, and we'll actually do a project. I'm excited for that. All right. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Denise and Ellie. I certainly do appreciate it. Um, like I said, if you guys want to, um, I have, if you didn't see the first session, it's available. Um, on my YouTube. Certainly feel free to either subscribe or tap the notify me button on our third session in two weeks um, so that I can catch you guys back then. And now that we kind of have some of the basics out of the way, um, I am going to go over the elements. We're going to start painting stuff. Um, I'm going to go over the walked dots. I'm going to go over swooshes. Uh, we're going to look at some other elements. And then uh, two weeks from that, I have a spiral that we're going to be doing together. Okay. Um, again, thank you guys. I certainly appreciate it. You have a fantastic evening. And again, if you have any questions or concerns, drop them for me later. You guys take care and enjoy.